Okay, welcome to part two, where we're going to actually create the soccer ball. Using Houdini's procedure approach, you can replace the box node with any other piece of geometry, and things will update from there. Uh, you will adjust the other nodes to make it look like a soccer ball, and this ability to swap out input nodes lets you prototype networks with simple geometry and then add more complexity as time goes by. So in the network editor, we're going to actually create something right here. There's two different ways that we can do this. One is under the Create menu. Um, there's Platonic Solid. We can just drag that actually right into here, and that will come in. So that's there. We could also use the Tab menu and put one in there as well. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Now we're going to delete the box, and we're going to wire the Platonic Solid right into here. And the default shape on a platonic solid is a tetrahedron, so we're going to change that to a soccer ball. And there we go. So now we've, well, hardly a soccer ball, but we're in the right direction. So let's go back to the polyextrude node that we had here. And there's the handle there, which we can interactively push down to get something looking a lot more like a soccer ball there. So again, we're looking at the result after it's been subdivided, but we are manipulating the polyextrude right there. That's sort of one of the ways Houdini lets you manipulate things. And then if you go to the subdivide node, then you lose the handles and you can just focus on the end result. And display-wise, um, let's go V shading. We could say smooth shaded if we want to just look at it like that, uh, or we can use shading uh, smooth wired shading if we want to see the topology there. There's a couple different options. Okay, so let's look at some things we can do in the network. One of the things we're going to do here is we're going to take the subdivide. We're going to press the Y key to just get rid of that. Then we're going to go in and we're going to put the subdivide in the middle here. And then we can set display on poly extrude. And of course we get this sort of crazy result right here. But we need this because we're going to do something a little bit different with how we set this up. What we want to do is we want to create um, a more realistic looking ball. The soccer ball we have so far is looking a little plasticky. So using this technique we're going to do some pretty interesting things. Now we're going to go into here, we're going to tab ray, and we're going to put it after the subdivide. So it's going to be right there. Now the ray doesn't do anything unless you've got something to ray against. So we're going to go tab sphere. And in this case here, we want this to be a primitive and we want to go one, one, one. And then we can put that into the side there. And what that does is when we subdivide it here, if you go here and you look at the ball here, you'll see that it's a, it's not perfectly round. It's sort of a little kinky because it's putting emphasis on the black areas here. So if we do the ray, we're actually projecting that back out. And uh, we're getting a soccer ball that's perfectly round. Now we could use a sphere that was a little smaller, but, but I think this will do the job. Now we put the display flag back on the poly extrude. And we want to go and change this back to connected elements. And we'll see the benefit of that in, in a moment. The next step is where we're going to actually re-extrude them as individual patches. So right now we extruded the whole soccer ball, all the faces of the soccer ball together. Uh, we want to do just the actual individual soccer patches, the original ones that we created earlier. So we're going to do that in the next step.